Hi there. It's Catherine again from Sunnyside Journals. Um, boy, I'm on a roll today. Let's get going on part two of, uh, of Do It Yourself. <sighs> okay, I'm sitting down. I hope it's not blurry. Let me take a look. Alrighty. Cross our fingers that it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't go uh, blurry again on me. If anyone's got any helpful hints for that, like Kelly's wonderful husband who helped me take out the trash. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, so I'm I'm at the point where I really should get out my little book here and and start a page for this guy. Alrighty. Let's just call. We'll call you do it yourself. For now. And then where'd I put my little tag? I had it somewhere this morning. Copyright 1956. Alrighty. And you are, let's see, if you missed part one, I'll put the link down there and you might want to go watch part one because I already got it in this morning and uh, I'm just leaving the block in there for now so that uh, the uh, reinforced spine will remember what I want it to do. All right, so let's see. You seem to be about six, by nine and an eight, by one. Alrighty, and uh. Take you out for now. I'm going to put in because of these terrible <laughs> end papers. <laughs> they still make me giggle. I'm going to, uh, of course, be putting in new ones, and I think I want them. I think five and a quarter will do it. So. Five and a quarter. Let's see. Yes, eight and three quarter. Eight and three quarter. Now I'm going to double check. These old books are not always symmetrical, so don't assume, yeah, I like that. Don't assume that one end paper for one side of your book is going to be the same yeah, as your end paper for the other side of the book. This one, I this will do fine. That will cover up both of these, um, <laughs> both of these sad, sad end papers. So for both. Okay, good. Um, I'm going to be putting in... Uh, I changed my mind. If you follow me on Instagram, because I'm over there today too. Um, initially, I had put five signatures with, with seven sheets of paper each into my book press. But... Uh, I decided to make them smaller. I decided to actually switch that up. And I've done seven signatures. With five leaves each. I had them in the book, in my book press for a little while, but then I got them out to play with them. So to just help them remember to stay skinny, I just put some dog clips on those ends. And uh, so 
So here they all are. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that actually should give me um, 140 pages. Which is nice. Now what I've done is uh, the front leaf for each signature is actually heavier than regular paper because I'm envisioning that I want to do a lot of tabs. I want to put some really cool looking tabs down uh, for each one. So I want it to be sturdy enough that it's uh, comfortable with a glued on tab. So what I did was uh, in order to balance out, because I know I did a shuffle jumble of the five signatures with seven sheets into seven signatures with five sheets. So what I had to do was take out two pieces of paper and then fold two more of these um, heavier papers to put in. And uh, so that's, that's good. Now this one, I usually like my first signature to have a really nice um, first front page that when you open it, it sort of goes, boom, aren't you glad you opened this book? So I'm just going to take a look and see which one. I like that. This is from an old accounting book from 1940-something, from the 1940s. I kind of like that. Practical accounting questions. How many can you answer? I like that one. That might be a first. Let's see. No. Oh. Well, who wouldn't need a warning of foot and mouth disease? Hmm. Oh. I might need that one instead. Obviously, I've got some doctoring to do. This is a, this is really old. This is also from the 40s. It was a farmer's manual on livestock health for, I think it was 1942. Yes, 1942. Let me check and make sure I haven't gone out of focus. Oh, I'm still good. Um... But I really like the warning for foot and, foot and mouth disease. That might have to be number one. Where am I, little? Don't mind me. Come on. Where are you? There we go. All right. So here's where I start labeling them. One. And I put my arrow for the top. Yeah, I like you for number two. Two. I think I want this one in the center. That's going to be number four. None of this is cast in stone. Until you sew things in, you can make any changes you want. Three. Four. Maybe it's going to be number five. LaSalle Extension University. If you want the CPA degree, these facts will. Fleur de Lis, you are number six. Thank you, Nancy. Oh, 
That makes you number seven. Not sure, right? number seven. All right. So those are good. I'm going to put the bulldogs back on them for the time being because I'm going to work on the cover a little bit. other stuff in my press right now. All right, you go aside. So happy with that. I'm not sure. I'm going to, this is where I start listing what I plan on putting inside this book. And uh, I plan on reusing a lot of the interior photos. Um, I'm also going to reuse, and I just thought of it just now, so again, this is my whole point of till you sew things, you've got lots of flexibility. I actually do want to see about reusing maybe two leaves out of the book. So I'm just going to write reuse two leaves. I don't know whether you pronounce it leaves as in multiples of a leaf on a tree but I'm from Toronto <laughs> and if you're from the Toronto the multiple of leaf is leaves <laughs> go leaves go <laughs> so two leaves um, from the interior Oh, lots of index cards, because this is my ode to index cards. <laughs> and then we'll figure out, I do think I want a little surprise things in that you wouldn't find in a industrial machinery kind of book. I think I still will fussy cut some some Edith Holden or maybe some old-fashioned ladies or nature mushrooms and things like that. Just so that it's sort of it I don't I don't want each page turn to become too predictable. I really like when People can turn a page and go, oh, well, I wasn't expecting that. That makes me happy. All right, so let's put you aside. Now I want, I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put a ribbon across the center to be the tie ribbons. So that when it closes, you can tie them shut. But this is still denty. So I think I need to go iron this. So I'm going to pause you and I'm going to go iron this. All right. I took out the dents and uh, when I just have a tiny little thing like this to, to press <laughs> ever the hairdresser I heat up my flat iron and just use my flat iron so I just put a little pencil mark on there so that I know where the center is I didn't um, this is polyester so um, it doesn't wrinkle very well you know how really cool um, 
seam binding, cotton seam binding, you can crinkle it and it gets that really rugged, uh, crinkly look. Um, it's polyester. It doesn't crinkle very well at all. And I'm okay with that. I actually, I, this one's really pretty. I love the little markings in it. Let me see if I can see how it's got those little markings. Very pretty. And I'm happy with it just looking smooth like that. And just regular use will, um, regular use will get it all wrinkly. Now this is nine and one eighth. So I'm just going to do four and a half from the top. There we go. Four and a half. I'm not going to try and figure out what half of nine and one eighth is. One eighth is not going to make that much of a difference. I can't see that other side. I'm going to make it darker. There, that's better. So now I want to just glue this across the inside. It's very thin, so I'm not worried about it um, showing through with the end paper. Some people will just glue, they'll glue one piece of ribbon on one side and one piece on the other side. This is so thin. Um, and I, I feel a little bit safer when I completely run my ribbon through the entire interior of the book. Um, I just know that it's not going to go anywhere. That that ribbon's in there for good. Come on. Come on. That's better. That it's in there for good, not going anywhere. I think I figured out why I've been in such a funk lately. Uh, a, a junk, a no junk funk or whatever lately. Usually when I'm up here in my studio, I have it turned off, but I've usually got my radio going. I love listening to Rat Pack. That's my favorite music. My father used to claim I was born in the wrong era. <laughs> um, and usually I've got, I have an Art Heart radio station that I enjoy. And um, usually I listen to that while I'm working and I sing my head off. And somehow or other in the past couple of weeks, I got into the bad habit of putting the news on. And I don't know about you, but the news just doesn't make me happy lately. These are, for, for many reasons, um, very unsettling times. And normally my studio is a little escape. And I, I think I realized this morning, because I didn't put the news on this morning, and I've been having a great old time in here, and I think think that I was sabotaging myself. I was sabotaging my own escape by still allowing the world. Sorry if this is jiggling. Um, I was sabotaging myself by allowing the news into my little, my little studio here, my little piece of heaven. So, I Although I've got my music turned off right now, when I'm finished recording this, uh, my music will be going back on and I will be singing Dean Martin. I got married to Dean Martin. I love Dean Martin. Well, I love all of them. Sammy Davis Jr., Sinatra, all of them. 
Okay, that's good. Doesn't need to be too perfect. Hold on. I don't like that though. A little bit more here. Come on. There we go. Thank you. Let's make sure you're completely... There we go. Now here's another silly little thing I do. It's just the worry wart in me. I really, uh, I like to make sure that my journals, I realize they're just paper and cardstock and like any book, they can't possibly last forever, but I like them to be as strong and as useful as possible. I really don't. My, I envision that the new owners who get one of my journals really do open them up, write in them, glue in them. I hope that they don't just go onto a shelf and, and don't get used. Um, but of course that's up to them. It's their book. But so I try my best to make these little guys as tough as possible. So something I do if I put um, if I put a ribbon through the cover halfway through is um, hold on. I really shouldn't be using bare fingers with the uh, Tyvek, my uh, my skin really reacts to Fabri-Tac, not Tyvek, Fabri-Tac. So then what I do is I put a little bit of Tyvek right across there just to give that a little added um, strength for when it's underneath the end paper. And I'm going to be using a thick end paper, so this will not show. And that just gives it a little more oomph for uh, for everyday wear and tear so that the new journaler can open it up, brighten it, close it up, pack it up, take it where they're going. There we go. Anyhow, yeah, uh, Fabri-Tac really, I get um, my skin fingers. I think over the years of working with chemicals, I was, I am, am. <laughs> A licensed hairstylist to pay the bills and um, see I did it again uh, I think over the years of getting my hands into hair color and bleach and perm solution and I know you're supposed to wear gloves but sometimes and ladies you know this is true there are hair emergencies and sometimes if you've got to unroll that perm rod to see if you've got your S wave yet, or you need to open up a foil and see if your blonde is is going to finish up in the same time that the color that's already been painted on is finishing up, sometimes to go and get the gloves, put the gloves on, and ah, I just want to open them. I just want to see inside the foil. And after years and years of my poor little fingertips being exposed to those chemicals, they'll, like, I don't know if you've ever noticed, my, this thumb is my worst one. You'd think it would be my right hand, because I'm right-handed, but this thumb gets, um, when I'm heavily into gluing with journaling now, because I don't do a lot of coloring anymore, I'm mostly retired from hairdressing. I, I do my regulars, I do family, and that's it from my home. Um... Anyhow, my, my fingertips will let me know when I've been a bad girl and, uh, and when I shouldn't be touching so much glue. <laughs> there we go. All right. Those baby wipes that I use are lovely. I actually pay extra for my baby wipes. I like... I like a biodegradable ba baby wipe that completely composts down. And that way, when I've used the daylights out of it, I can pitch it actually into my glue box because it's completely biodegradable. All right, so that's good. So we've got that done. I don't like that you don't have any. Uh -oh, breaking out this again. I just cleaned up my fingers. Oh, look at that. How did I miss all you? 
Oh my goodness, Catherine Ann. There we go. Let's see if I can do this without touching it because my fingers are clean. There we go. Good girl, Catherine. That's better. Are you all right? No. Boy, oh boy. Well, don't listen to anything I teach, eh? Well, but by guess and by golly, nothing. There we go. Glue you down so that I don't have to touch you with my clean fingers. There you go. You're okay. That side's okay. So I did it halfway. All right. That's good. That's it. I'm going to, um, I still haven't decided what's going to be my end papers. So I'm gonna do that, so I'm stopping now. Like I said, you might be getting a whole bunch of teeny tiny little videos today, or this might be the last one, I don't know. Thanks for stopping by, thanks for joining in. Uh, the sun is out now, so I'm a happy girl. I'll talk to you soon, bye.